Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Hello friends, welcome to Fairfield Today. Paul Jasson with you. A, a beautiful day as we uh, begin our telecast down here at Fairfield Federal Downtown, coming out of the big Lancaster Festival and then moving on to the rest of the summer and uh, kind of getting close to school starting. It's hard to believe that, you know, falls right around the corner as nice as it is outside right now, but, uh, but things move on. And, and one of the things we like to talk about are all the, the really neat little festivals and uh, events that happen around Fairfield County, Lancaster. Everybody is back full go again after maybe being gone for a little bit. Everything's back full go. And one of the ones that has been around a very long time, uh, something like 30 years, is the Baltimore Festival. It began uh, with the idea, I think, of the great Jerry Ayers, uh, the pumpkin carver, the wonderful guy from Baltimore who, who did so much to kind of put all this together and come up with the idea. I had the Baltimore uh, uh, Volunteer Fire Department, they had fish fries, they had a lot of little things going on, but he kind of put it together with the concept of the, uh, of the Baltimore Festival. So fast forward now, 30 years later, and it, it's going strong. It is really a big event in Baltimore, so it's a pleasure to have on with us here. Royalty today, as we begin. <laughs> Uh, Miss Iris Shriver, Baltimore Queen, would I be correct on that? Yes, you are. Baltimore Festival Queen, I guess that's it, lovely sash, probably <laughs> indicating you. that. Do you get to keep that? or? Um, yes, I get to keep the wow. sash and the crown. It's nice. part of what I won. It's nice. my little trophy, I guess. <laughs> uh, Iris Shriver, again, royalty here with the Baltimore Festival. You are a proud graduate of uh, Liberty Union High School. Go Lions. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> And so now you're uh, kind of saving your money, going to start school here. Mm -hmm. You've been out almost a year now, right? Mm, just a couple months out of school. Oh, I graduated okay. this year. Oh, okay, spring, you graduated this year. This year. So <laughs> just out, uh, kind of getting yourself squared away here. But uh, what I was thinking of, because you have worn a sash similar to this uh, for a couple years now, right? A year <laughs> ago, you were the... I don't know if they called it the first runner-up, the first attendant. First attendant, yes. First attendant a year person. ago. Yes. And so then uh, you, you, ran, you were able to run again, and you were selected as the Baltimore Queen for, mm -hmm. I guess, 23, 20, 20, 22, 23? 23, 23? Yes. Okay. And your reign ends here uh, at the, the end of the, of the Baltimore yep. Festival. And again, the Baltimore Festival is August 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So uh, Iris's reign as the Baltimore Queen will end the 5th. So you don't have uh, just a few days left here. It's uh, Has it been an exciting year? Now, I know you had another year of it, so I actually probably helped you understand what was going oh, yes. on. But uh, has the year of Queen been pretty, pretty interesting? Yes, it has. There's not really my very first year. Um, I was a fish out of water. I didn't really understand what to expect when you think of. Um, and you were a senior in high school. I was year. a junior, junior when I was school. first. Attending. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't really understand what to expect. You know, you think pageant, you think toddlers and tiaras. Sure. Sure. <laughs> and it's not. It's not like that at all. It's many hours of volunteer work, giving away your time to those in need, volunteering at um, homes of the elderly, the food pantry, keeping our. We have our own. It's called um, a blessing box, and every queen, a new queen every week, is responsible for filling it with food for those who are less fortunate. Oh, sure. And um, like I said, many hours of volunteer work. We clean up before and after the festival as well. And not only that, but we are responsible for representing Baltimore for that our time of our reign, which sure. is a year. Sure. Sure. Um, I basically go around all around Ohio. Um, different festivals. There's been a couple memorable memorable ones like the Swiss Festival in Sugar Creek. That, that one's nice one up there. One of my favorites. Beautiful. That's a little drive away too oh, in yes. a couple hours. It's about three hours. Yeah. Three hours yeah. there, three sure. hours Sugar back. Creek, yeah. Did you attend the fair here last yes. year as the as the first attended? Um, last year it would be the Queen last year. Okay. Uh, the previous oh, year. Oh, that's right because when attended. the fair hits this year you'll be gone. There'll be mm -hmm. a new Queen. So, yes. And that's a big deal here because they have a lot of Queens attend this. A this lot is, of fair uh, I'm sure it's yes. required 
attendance. Mm -hmm, it is. Know? There are a yeah. couple that are required, like the Sweet Corn Festival. That's a required sure. event. The Fourth of July Parade here is another required event. You enjoyed that this year? Had a oh, beautiful yes. day for that. Very, very warm. Have you developed the wave? You've yes, got that I have. down. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> now, did your first attendant get to ride with you on this, or was this yes, just you? Yes. Our any mandatory parade that we have, our entire corps will sit on the float for that. So, so there are literally. I'm sure dozens of festival if and you have to pick and choose and I'm sure you're mm -hmm. the Baltimore board there whoever selects the queen decides that so there are half a dozen a dozen that you're required to go to um, there's only about four or five events but the rest is up to me and what I'd like to decide now for coming for who gets selected to be the queen it's um, last year it was Carla Woodnicky and then her husband and her daughter that were the judges of our last year's pageant. Okay. And that is where my director is right now at her pageant that she um, directs as well. Okay. Um, they are based there from West Virginia. And she is the maker and creator of Pink Heart Sash Company, which is where we get our sashes from. And Beautiful, known for how, lovely. how lovely, how um, lovely. And yes, that's who judges our pageants as well. We also have someone from First National Bank in our town, since they are a big sponsor, they'll have a big decision in who becomes our queen. So. Uh, as I have indicated, Jerry Ayers, a name familiar to you, I'm mm -hmm. sure, is, is a name any from Baltimore would know. But 30 years has begun. Now, fast forward now, and uh, this is a big weekend. The, this year, the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, the Baltimore Festival. Uh, do you have to do a lot at the festival itself when it's on, so, being your your last couple days? <laughs> so the last couple days, and my job is basically to just attend the festival, show that I'm there, show my support, mm -hmm. while the new queen will have a hand in, we have a, um, it's called a cruise-in or a car show. Sure. And it's definitely one of the biggest attractions at our festival. There are many, many beautiful cars there. Last year there oh, were multiple Mustang deal. GTs, and we had many Chrysler, Chevy Impalas as well. It's a beautiful Sound like you selection. know your cars. Yes, I do. Yes, your favorite is? <laughs> Definitely Chevy Impala. Nice, that's nice. I mm -hmm. used to, when, when I, many years ago when they first came out with those, they used to have what was called SS 327s, 396s, 427s. Those were the, as far as I'm concerned, they didn't beautiful get much cars. better <laughs> than the SS 427, a Chevy, which was a mm -hmm. Chevy Impala. Nice cars. So you, where, now where do they have the car show? Um, they have it right in the middle of the festival. Oh yeah, so just block everything off. Mm -hmm. sure. Yep. It'll, they'll clear a big space. It'll be right by the main stage, and they'll have all the cars line up. And the Queen's responsibility is to pick out the um, top three cars. Nice. So it's up to nice. the Queen and her court to pick out the cars. Last year, unfortunately, I did not get the privilege because it rained our entire festival, which was unfortunate. Bummer. I know. I was very excited about it. The way you are with cars, <laughs> that would have been very cool. Mm -hmm. it's did very did they actually ha select a car then? Somebody selected a car or no? Um, I think they ended up not having it because yeah. the grounds were too wet to and, get the and cars And these there. people that have these cars, they always don't want to bring them out mm -mm. on really bad weather. They like today, it'd be perfect. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, oh, that's, yes. that's kind of disappointing. Um, but, boy, a lot going on. Now, again, it's BaltimoreFestival.org. That's the website. Mm -hmm. You're mentioned prominently on the website <laughs> there as the queen. Uh, your reign is just about over. Uh, today, as we tape it, it's the first, so you only have like four days left. Yeah. Uh, W will you be sad to see it end, or will you? Are you thinking it'd be nice to have my life back? <laughs> there are definitely um, pluses definitely, and minuses. Yes, it's yeah. definitely going to be bittersweet to leave. There's a lot of friends that I've made, a sure. lot of people I've met. A I lot bet of you've met a lot of other queens, huh? Oh yes, plenty and plenty and plenty of other yeah. queens. Yeah. Anytime you think, oh, I've met them all, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> there's definitely more. Yeah. It's def it's been an experience. The entire reason that I decided to try, which was the first year that I ran, so I would have been first attendant, sure. was just because of my love of public speaking. And I figured I'd give it a try, something new, why not? And I ended up placing on the court, which was unexpected. And then here's this year where I'm queen, getting to continue public speaking, something that I love and hold dear to my heart. So it's definitely been an experience. Well, you, you do a great job here as somebody <laughs> that's just a, a senior in high school. I interview <laughs> my fair share of, uh, of high school kids and lots of them not nearly as eloquent as you are. So congratulations. <laughs> I can you. see why you enjoy it. Is that something you might want to pursue later on? Something um, in the speaking area? My goal is to pursue business management in college okay. and um, gain experience through there. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to go to Germany as well. I am I can speak German. I'm not quite fluent yet, but I'm, I'm good enough to speak it, I, I would say. <laughs> so. Well, I, 
I'll, I'll share that I, I was there 18 months in the Army, and I know some words, but they aren't words that you probably should know or want to know. <laughs> they were Army words that we learned back then, mm -hmm. so we won't share those, but you'll love it over there. It is a truly a, have you ever visited there? Um, I have not. My family there, though, is from Dusseldorf oh, in Germany, nice. so we're from it's around that area. Fabulous area, great mm -hmm. food, great architecture, oh, castles. Yes, I'm sure everything beautiful. you've ever seen, you can't wait yes, to I'm wait very to, Good for that. <laughs> so we talk about the Baltimore Festival now, and I was looking at, again, coming up August 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and it's really uh, kind of in the main square right there, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is downtown. They right block the it all off. Mm -hmm. Well, for the parade, it's going. It's right down West Market Street and sure. Main Street, and sure. it goes right into the festival, where all of the queens will announce where they're from, where the festival is, and what time the festival is. So it's kind of nice to be able to be to learn where the time is, not having to look it up anywhere. So. When, uh, how many people uh, each year run for? the first attended. I guess maybe there's just one or two attendants and the Queen. So how many are they all Baltimore people that run for um, that? Yes, they are. Okay. They have to either have they have to either live in Baltimore themselves or have a relative a direct relative okay. that lives in Baltimore. And how many do you how many ran against you when you ran for Queen? Um there was only it was really it was very difficult to get people in for the court last year because the pageant industry is declining a little yeah. bit. And you were just coming kind of out of COVID kind of mm -hmm. stuff back then too. So there was only one other girl, so we were just we were mere comp competing for places. Sure. Who would get queen? Who would get first sure. attendant? Sure. Sure. And I was fortunate enough to get queen. Well, I can I can see why you have that. You, you just do a wonderful job. Now I was looking at the events here. Uh, Thursday at 5:30 p.m. A baby pageant, do you get to select a winner in that? Is that something that falls yeah. under you? That is something That is something different from our pageant, and yeah. ours is the Baltimore Queens. The baby pageant is just more of... All the beautiful little babies. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Then they have a tea night, 7.30. You're probably all about that. Yes, that's the, the newly crowned queen will be the one that's running that. I'll still be there just to show my support, of course. Um, but they'll have, be having a band called Recess. Play Recess, seven thirty. That goes a couple hours, three mm -hmm. hours. Just, um, I think probably just about two or three. Okay, and that's all August third. Starts at five thirty with the baby pageant. Then Friday, August fourth, at the Baltimore Festival, we have uh, Jared Foster at three o'clock, and then they have the big car show. Mm -hmm. Cross your fingers that yes, uh, you yes, get yes. to be involved in that <laughs> somehow this year. And then, wow, they're, they're pulling up all the great ones. 815, Phil Dirt and the Dozers. That's a big deal. At least it <laughs> used to be. They were one of the bands to appear here, so congratulations on that. And then, really, Saturday is kind of the big day, huh? Yes, it is. Yeah. Starts in the morning at 830 at the 5K race. Do you attend that? No, I do not. I'm at my home getting ready for oh, the big parade. I, and the parade is at 1030? Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're really your swan song, your last day it really as is. queen of the Baltimore <laughs> Festival. Uh, kind of, again, kind of happy, sad. Last hurrah, one last hurrah. One. You probably, <laughs> you'll probably hate to see it end, as, we, as you indicated. But, uh, but, you know, it's been a busy year. You've done a lot mm -hmm. of things. Uh, have your time back. <laughs> yes. Looking forward to that. <laughs> Uh, face painter from 12 to 4. They've got a Kosai Science Show. 1 o'clock, a vintage baseball game. Uh, Roxy Jane's Trio at 2. Jill Henwood and the Victoria Players. They're mighty good. Mm -hmm. I enjoy watching Jill and all those folks at 5. Uh, Direct Energy. I guess that's a band at 8 o'clock. And then there's a big 50 50 drawing at 9 15. So, really, uh, kind of all day Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, Friday, Thursday evening, Friday evening, and then all day Saturday. And then voila. You'll Not take your so. sash off for the final yes, time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, would you do it all again if you had to do it over the, with the knowledge that you gained? And I, I would guess you'd say yes because I'm sure you've gained a lot of uh, ability to talk to people and see people who you probably would never have had that chance. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I've definitely grown into a different person through becoming a festival queen and on the festival board, or not the festival board, excuse me, through the pageant industry. Sure, sure. And it's been in a very, it's been a very life-altering experience. Um, there's a lot of girls who are very well spoken, mm -hmm. and it's very interesting getting to talk to them. They all live a little bit differently than I do myself, and becoming friends with them, knowing them, them becoming a part of my daily lives is something that I would never have thought that I'd do. So. Well, I can say the Baltimore Festival did a great job in choosing you. You, Thank you. you. I can tell you're a wonderful representative for Baltimore and, and Fairfield County and all the parades and events you've attended. So uh, uh, coming up this weekend, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, uh, up in Baltimore, and uh, you get the last chance to see Iris Shriver as the Baltimore Festival Queen. Congratulations again. Thank, thank, you. thank you for joining us. Of course. Thank you and, for having uh, me. And uh, good luck as you pursue 
business management in the future. <laughs> Thank you very much. Iris Shriver, who is the uh, current, uh, for another four days, Baltimore <laughs> Festival Queen. Good luck. Thank you. We'll be back on Fairfield Today in a moment. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local trusted, experienced, Dagger Law. The staff that have been here know what it takes. They've been on the other side. They see what it takes to make someone comfortable, to make the family comfortable, and really what kind of support they need. And so I think that's what really makes Fairhope what it is. My name is Allie. Um, I just became 14 years sober at the end of last month. Through the support of my family and friends, I got the courage to ask for help. And through treatment services and the recovery community, I was able to start my recovery journey. Now I get to work as a peer supporter and an addiction treatment navigator where I get to help the next sick and suffering. If you don't have family and friends that can support you right now, you can find those supports through treatment providers, the recovery community, and peer supporters like me. Every life matters, and your recovery is worth it. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Fairfield Federal, when it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Fairfield Today. I want to thank Iris Shriver, the Baltimore Festival Queen, coming down to join us. What a joy it is to talk to her. And you can tell a sharp little girl, get up to the Baltimore Festival this weekend if you can. It'd be well worth your time. So great little village feel up there when you go. And they do a bang up job August 3rd, 4th, and 5th coming up this weekend. Uh, we'll change up a little bit, but we'll keep kind of in the entertainment vein as we're talking about a festival. Uh, this one, I guess, dates back to 1973 when there was an idea to start this uh, outdoor drama called Tecumseh, and frankly, I had no idea what that was until I started reading about, for the last 50 plus years of Tecumseh, what that was all about, and it, here it is going stronger than ever 50 years later, and it is uh, really the, the premier outdoor drama in central, southeastern Ohio, around in there. It is, it is something for Ross and Pickaway and all those counties over there. The, the boon to those areas probably is amazing. The guy to talk about that is the, uh, I guess, the director, CEO, former ticket taker. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Smith. Uh, you've kind of done it all in your tenure on and off over what 20 years yeah about 20 years 20 years started as uh, just entry level 
As a ticket, as a ticket taker. Were you a Chillicothe boy? I was, yeah. Yeah. Born born and raised there. So you saw this pretty much your whole life then? Yeah, I remember going, uh, you know, as a Boy Scout. Sure. uh, And and them showing us how to fire the cannons uh, really kind of left a mark in my mind. I didn't put those two things together, though, until just a few years ago. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was was here. Do they have volunteers, like scouts and things? Do they have volunteers help over there like the festival here does? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, we have lots of groups who usher preseason to come help just remove leaves sure. and things like sure. that. Yeah. Well, uh, again, it's the Sugarloaf Mountain Amphitheater, just a, a a nice, small 500 acre area over there, but obviously much smaller where you have. But uh, what an amazing setting to have this just perfect for this kind of outdoor drama. It is, you know, so there'll be days when I go out and stand on that stage and think, gee, you know, the guys who picked this spot were insurance salesmen and and, uh, and car salesmen, they didn't know man. anything about yeah. theater, yeah. but somehow they felt that that was the right spot and they nailed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so every year do you do improvements each and every year, kind of little things need work to keep up and, and, and keep it moving forward? For sure, there's kind of uh, two different aspects to that. You know, there's the show itself, sure, and you want to make sure that the show looks fresh and is entertaining and has high artistic quality. Um, which requires lights and costumes and all sorts of things that need to be kept up on a yearly basis. But there's also just the the physical plant itself, the parking lots, the road uh, up to the theater, uh, you know, the box office structures, the phone lines, all of that. So there's kind of two different things, and you have to kind of balance, you know, There's always something to do. The facility's 52 years old now. Um, And some years we spend more on the show, and some years we spend more on the facility, hoping that eventually... It all balances and everything's kept going. So it's it's been 50-plus years now. And again, I ask you the website, and I forget, Tecumseh... TecumsehDrama.com. TecumsehDrama.com. Good good website. A lot of information on there. Tickets are available on the website. Yes. And... and, uh, Is it uh, just festival seating? You pick a seat, or do you just... It's, uh, it's all reserved seating. Okay. Um, so That's you can go in and happen. pick your own seat. Sure. We have several different sections with lots of different levels of ticket pricing. Sure. And, yeah. it's, it's all on there. It's a good website. Yeah. Lots of information on there. Tecumsehdrama.com. Uh, but uh, h- how many people does it take each and every year to kind of make this thing all come together? Uh, hundreds. Uh, I don't have a, a full accounting sure. of that, but uh, in general, there's about 50 people on the stage. Yeah. There's about 50 people off stage. I'm going to say there's in front of, behind. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And then you've got all the board members, all the volunteers, all of that. It, it you know, it, it's probably well over 500. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, and again, it's it's. You know, anybody, if, if you haven't been to it, I would highly encourage you to, to go over and see it. It runs through about a month, early September? Uh, yeah, so Labor Day weekend. Labor yeah. Day weekend. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'd encourage you to get over. If you haven't seen it, take the kids, take the grandkids. It's a, just a wonderful, if, if nothing else, be, besides the tremendous drama and everything that goes on, what a great source of history to kind of learn the true story about Tecumseh. It's a fascinating piece of history, really, yeah. and uh, one that, uh, you know, is taught in schools a little sure. bit um, during Ohio history. I think it's fifth grade when, when they get yeah. to touch on Ohio that. Ohio history, that's right. Yes. Our, our hope is always that, you know, our show is two hours long, right? Mm-hmm. We can't tell the whole story in two hours. Sure. So our hope is that people will come and see the story and, and be interested in going out and, and really digging into that and learning a little bit more about the history of where, where we all live. Sure, sure. And I will bet you over the course of 50 plus years now, just a little over 50 years, that you've got uh, many generational people coming. Yes. Uh, maybe a husband and wife, they came maybe when they were young like you, and then they brought their kids, and now maybe even grandkids Absolutely. come back. Absolutely. Uh, I hear those stories every night, yeah. uh, and I, I love hearing that sure. kind of story. Yeah. Now, uh, you, you draw your acting crew. Now, you, we have a couple... Uh, uh, drama things here in Lancaster, a couple player uh, bits, and they draw people from Columbus and around, not only just Fairfield County. Is that how it works for you? Because, you know, you got to be kind of gifted to do what you, you, you got to act and you got to be able to probably ride a horse. Yeah, a lot of people ride a horse, yes, <laughs> uh, or fire a gun or <laughs> a cannon. Right. I mean, That's, it's not yeah, every day sure. you get to fire a cannon. Sure. Uh, or, or, or row a canoe. Um, yeah. Yes, there's lots of special skills. We, you know, we'll train people to do that sure. if they're willing to learn. But it always helps if they bring a little. So bit do you of get people regionally from around. Probably there's always repeat. We audition all over the country. So this okay. year I went as far west as California, as really? far north as Maine. Wow. Uh, we go to a big one in Tennessee every year. And that, another outdoor drama. So those are what we call cattle call auditions. Okay. So I will oh, be so in you a room. See them. Yes, sure. there'll be. 
50 other theater companies there. Over three or four days, I'll see maybe 5,000 auditions. Um, and then uh, you kind of whittle it down from there. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, that's a lot of people to play Tecumseh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, which, which I'm sure is a, is obviously the prime part. Now, mm -hmm. do, do people repeat for that for a couple years if they choose? For sure. Gen generally, uh, somebody who's going to be in that role has grown up through the company. That's not always okay. true. Um, but, uh, you know, they will have played a smaller part and then moved up to another part and then moved up to that. There's just a lot about not only learning the script and the staging and all of that that you need to know, but just about how the company itself runs, you know, not only do they work there, but they live there. So uh, right. they're there 24 hours a day with each other. And, w uh, and when does the the practice begin, or not the auditions necessarily, but okay, we pr we've got the cast now, we've got them set, now we bring them into town, and now we start start drilling. When does that start? Mid-May. So May. They, they get about, about three weeks to put the show together. Okay. Yeah. And then so it's really mid-May through 1st of September, around yeah. the 1st of September, where they're That's right. uh, Ross County residents right That's there. Right. And yeah. some of them will stay. We do a Halloween show as well. And uh, about half of the people who are in Tecumseh will stay to do that. So there are some of them who are here uh, through almost Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, and I assume a lot of the people you get, well, the ones you probably go to these cattle calls where you have these auditions, these are probably mostly actors. Uh, people that do this for a living that go from various places to places, but you probably have some local people that fill in sure do um, I have I think six what I would consider to be locals in the show okay. this year uh, every night Is that typical um, It's it's kind it's high uh, okay. for recently. It okay. used to be much higher than that, you know 20 30 years ago um, So six is a good number for us uh, mm -hmm. a couple of them are uh, are equestrians uh, and horse folks who uh, have because they're knowledge. local, get to work with the horses sure. in the winter as well and get sure. a rapport with them. Um, but it's I love having local folks uh, in the show. It really took, you know, this company in Tecumseh was, was a homegrown thing. It still very much is. Uh, it's run by a very small group of people. There's only seven of us who run the company in total all year long. Uh, and so having local folks uh, gives an opportunity to... Uh, really kind of create families there you know they they have yeah. kids uh, who are involved with the show and on and on and it's uh, it's kind of a wonderful thing well and and again it, it's probably super cool for a guy like you I'm talking with Brandon Smith a local boy Chillicothe grew up there and now he's the CEO and kind of director and does everything with this but uh, to just come for where you've come from and from the entry level position to now to the to the top position in, in, in the food chain there, uh, just to see this each and every year come off, it's, it has to be very satisfying. It sure is. Uh, yeah, that was uh, uh, really helped me make the decision to come back. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, it's very satisfying every night to see that show go up. Yeah. Now, th does it have, uh, I, I assume most of the so support probably comes from advertising and programs and a lot of local people do this this is probably just part of their annual budget absolutely yeah. so you know we have corporate sponsorships and membership all, all that kind of standard stuff um, truly most of our income comes from ticket sales sure which is uh, not not always the way the arts organizations uh, are set up but sure. um, we've been lucky to be able to largely support ourselves uh, through through the work that's done on the stage for a long time. Now, how how many people? If you have a full crowd, what what's that consist of? Uh, there's 1,689 seats in that theater, and you probably yeah. sat in every seat. I sat in every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so so over 1,500 people available yeah. a night, and I'm sure you're sold out many nights. Yes, but uh, after July 4th, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays get extremely full. Yeah, um, it's easier to get a ticket through the week. Sure, uh, obviously. Uh, and earlier in the run, it's easier to get a ticket. Yeah. Now, now, what's the what's the schedule? Seven days a week. Six. So Mondays Six through Saturdays. Okay, yeah. Sunday off. Monday Sunday through off. Saturday. So get on the website to come to drama dot com. Yeah. Okay. And uh, lots of good information on there to get that. But uh, you can pick your seats, pick the days you want to come, and uh, do the prices change based on what day it is? Yes. Yeah. So, so Monday through Thursday is going to be a little less than Friday and Saturday. Uh, also, we have different sections. So, you know, tickets start around 20 bucks, but okay. you could, they go up to 60 Sure. So. Sure. So depending on what your family size is or what your yep. needs are, how close, everybody's, you can tell the horses, you can tell the people, you can get a lot of the... Now, do they wear microphones? How are they mic'd over there for this? They don't wear microphones, but we have uh, what we call mini shotgun mics sure. that are kind of hidden Pick all up over everything. the stage. Yeah. Um, this is a new thing that we put in a couple of years ago. Oh. Up until then, we used no microphones at all. 
um, but, probably um, helped out a lot. Oh, it's a it's a massive difference. Yes, uh, and uh, so you get very much easier to hear the show. We also installed a hearing enhancement system, which is just a small device that you can wear like a headset. Oh, like which if you'd be inside if you want to just for hearing. Exactly. Uh, uh, Odd, odd additional hearing yes. abilities. Yes. Yeah, and you yeah. have those available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you look back over where this was maybe years ago, maybe not when you started, but over years ago, uh, a lot of enhancements like that over the years, has it changed a lot? Uh, maybe just electronically, has that changed yeah. some of it? Or is the drama pretty much stayed the same? So the story is pretty the much story. the same. The way we produce that story yes. has changed in massive ways over really? the years. Largely really? technology, lights, sound, those sorts sure. of things, but um, sure. also just the sensibility that a different director or a different actor might bring to that part uh, will, will inform what a show looks like in a given year. Uh, so the story, the heart of the story, the message of the story uh, has not changed, but certainly sure. the way that it, we tell it has. Do you have different directors every year, uh, people you bring in, or do, do they tend to come in and, and be there for a while? Yeah, it's not every year, I'd say. Uh, Brent Gibbs, who directed the show this year, this was his fifth season back. Uh, will be his last season. Consecutive? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is his last year, so this'll next be year will be a new year. somebody new. Yep, he's, he's yeah. retired, so uh, ju- uh, I'll, I'll give you an exclusive. Okay. <laughs> Julie right. Richardson will be our director next year. And and she's underneath or uh, uh, somebody in, in, in learning right now? She, uh, so, uh, no, no. Okay. But she has directed at our theater before, okay. not Tecumseh, but other shows. Okay. And has a long, long history with outdoor dramas all over the country, so. What an asset that of would be. Yes. I mean, t- t- because that's a different animal. Just like, yep. say, the Lancaster Festival, which just ended here, there are certain idiosyncrasies to that pavilion, to that amphitheater that only are there, and I'm sure that's the case there, so somebody would have that knowledge, would that's have a right. leg up. That's right, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, TecumsehDrama.com is the website. All the information, ticket prices, pick your seats, pick a night when you want to come, rain or shine. Yeah, it's Pretty rare much. that we it's rare that we cancel. We yeah. really try to get a show. You know, people come from all over the place. Yeah. They want to see the show, yeah. and so we try to give it to yeah. them. Yeah, well, you do you do such a great job over there. Thanks for coming over, Brandon Smith, Thank who you. is uh, the head guy over there, and uh, for many years to come. We hope we appreciate you being in. Thanks, Thanks. for coming Good to, to Lancaster. You. Thank yeah. you, Brandon Smith with Tecumseh, that great outdoor drama in Chillicothe. Get over to see it. It goes through September Third. three. September three. Get over and see it. Thanks for joining us on Fairfield today. Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.